Hey everyone, welcome to my channel Dental Edge. I'm Dr. Bhanachuk and today we'll be drawing together a oral pathology diagram of mucoepidermoid carcinoma. Now to draw any oral pathology diagram, you first need to know the histopathologic features of that tumor. So we'll read that first and then we will draw the diagram. But before that, if you are new to my channel and are interested in dental videos, do consider subscribing it and click the bell icon so you don't miss anything. Also, I have already uploaded a lecture on complete mucoepidermoid carcinoma. You can check that out. I'll mention the link below in the description box and dental notes for mucoepidermoid carcinoma as well as other dental topics are present on my website. The link for the website also I'll mention below. You can also join my regular online oral pathology classes. To register, you can contact me on the number mentioned on the screen. Now let's get started with mucoepidermoid carcinoma. So let's see the histopathologic features of a mucoepidermoid carcinoma. Now mucoepidermoid carcinoma, it's a malignancy of salivary tissue origin and from the name we can understand that there are presence of two types of cells. What are they? Let's divide this word into two parts, muco and epidermoid. So from this at least we know that there are two types of cells are present, mucus producing cells from the term muco, right? And squamous or epidermoid that is flat cells from the term epidermoid. So there are mucus producing cells, there are squamous or epidermoid cells and there is a third population cells which is very important for the diagnosis of a mucoepidermoid carcinoma that is an intermediate cell. So we have to draw three types of cells in a diagram of mucoepidermoid carcinoma. There are mucus producing cells, there are squamous or epidermoid cells and there are intermediate cells. These intermediate cells, they are thought to be the progenitor of mucus producing and squamous cells. Now let's see how are these uh, three cells appear so that we can draw it. The mucus cells, they are of various shape and they contain abundant foamy cytoplasm that stain positively with mucin stains. So variable shape cells are there. They have foamy cytoplasm, right? The nucleus towards one end because of mucin and they stain positively with mucin stains. This is the mucus cell. This is the first population. What is the second population of cells? They are the squamous epidermoid cells, right? They are characterized by squamoid features, flat cell features. What are the features? They are polygonal shape. So they are a polygonal shape. They have intercellular bridges and rarely they may produce keratinization. This is the second population of cells. We will draw it together. And third is the intermediate cell. These intermediate cells, I told you they are progenitor cells, thought to be the progenitor cells and they are larger than basal cells but smaller than squamous cells. So oval shaped cells with a darkly staining nuclei, scanty cytoplasm are the features of a intermediate cell. Now these all three cells, how will they be arranged in the tumor? So let's see how are they arranged. These epidermoid, mucus and intermediate cells, they line cystic spaces. So these cells, these three group of cells, they may present around cystic spaces or they may form solid masses or cords. So this is what we'll draw. We'll draw solid masses or cords and cystic spaces that are surrounded by these cells, right? Then epidermoid and mucus cells, they may also be arranged in glandular pattern and the cyst, it may sometimes rupture and mucin, it may be pooled in the connective tissue which may evoke an inflammatory reaction. So these are the basic histopathologic points of a mucoepidermoid carcinoma. Let's see this image, right? These are large cells. These are the mucus cells, correct? Right? Then these flat cells, polygonal shaped flat cells you can see here. These are the epidermoid or the squamous cells and a population of cells which is slightly larger than basal cells but smaller than squamous cells. If we can appreciate here, these are the uh, intermediate cells, squamous or epidermoid. These foamy cytoplasmic uh, varying uh, cells, these are the mucus cells. Now let's draw together the diagram of a mucoepidermoid carcinoma. So this is what we are looking for. This is a cystic space. Again, a cystic space we'll draw. Then these cells, these are the mucus cells, mucus cells, uh, 
nuclei towards one end and foamy cytoplasm there this is the mucus cell again this is the these are the flat cells the squamoid feature cells these are they and a small population of these cells small cells these are the intermediate cells so this is what we'll draw in a diagram so let's draw together now a mucoepidermoid carcinoma so as i told you we'll be drawing three population of cells cells like spaces and solid sheets of cells as well so let's first draw the mu cystic spaces and uh, mucus secreting cells these mucus secreting cells they are large cells of variable shape and they have a foamy cytoplasm and the nuclei is towards one end due to the mucin then the second population of cell are the intermediate cells these are polygonal shaped cells uh, having intercellular bridges these are flat cells right so let's draw them then let me draw a few more cystic spaces and the cystic is filled with mucin now i'm drawing a connective tissue septa right uh, there are collagen fibers in this connective tissue septa there are a few fibroblast and blood vessels the third type of cell that i'll draw are the intermediate cells these are small cells and uh, they are larger than the basal cells but smaller than the squamoid cells or the flat cells now let me fill this uh, tumor with more cells i'm just filling it up with all these variety of cells now i'm just filling up the squamoid cells with eosinophilic cytoplasm and then i will draw a flat nuclei so i'm drawing a nuclei for the same let me draw nuclei in mucus cells that is nuclei towards one end nuclei of the fibroblast endothelial cell lining of the blood vessel now i am drawing the nuclei of the uh, intermediate cells a nuclei that is almost completely filling the cell, uh, cell and there is scanty cytoplasm so this is we are done with a gross diagram now let's come to the most important thing that is labeling the diagram so first i am labeling these large foamy cytoplasmic cells with nuclei towards one end that is i will label it as the first population of cell that is mucus cells then the polygonal shaped flat cells that is the epidermoid cells and then the intermediate cells then connective tissue septa i am labeling and then let me mark these cystic spaces that are containing mucin so here we are done with how we will draw oral pathology diagram of a mucoepidermoid carcinoma i will keep on uploading more such diagrams for a complete lecture of mucoepidermoid carcinoma has been already uploaded you can check it out the description the link for the same i'll mention below in the description box then notes for mucoepidermoid carcinoma and other dental topics are there on my website the link for the same again i'll mention below in the description box also there is a general video on how to draw oral pathology diagrams that also the link i'll mention on the i button above you can check it out to join my regular or online oral pathology classes you can contact me on the number mentioned on the screen i hope this video helps you if you like the video press a thumbs up and uh, do subscribe the video and keep watching thank you